Chicago's most sensational natural feature is that big inland sea to the east. And we're unique among world cities in that almost our entire waterfront is a park. The 18-mile-long lakefront park system is the signature feature of the 1909 Plan of Chicago, also known as the Burnham Plan. Dramatic pedestrian bridges solved a big problem for Southsiders. For many years, they had a hard time getting to their lakefront park because they had to cross not only Lakeshore Drive, but also the Illinois Central Railroad that the city ill-advisedly ran up the South Lakefront in the 1860s. You can blame the man entombed here for those tracks. Senator Stephen A. Douglas had an estate here and cooked up the land grant that allowed the railroad to come up the lakefront right past its property. It would take 150 years to fully reclaim our shoreline for the public. The tomb features a statue of Douglas, who owned enslaved people. It towers above the black neighborhood of Bronzeville, which has led residents and state legislators to call for its removal. South of downtown, the Burnham Plan envisioned a string of man-made islands connected by bridges to the park along the shore. But Northerly Island was the only one ever built. Even before it was completed in 1925, business leaders were coveting it for an airport, but the Great Depression put those plans on hold. Instead, Northerly Island and a huge swath of the South Lakefront hosted Chicago's second World's Fair, the Century of Progress in 1933 and 34. It was a beacon of hope in the depths of the Depression. The colorful, futuristic pavilions reflecting the theme of scientific progress were a complete contrast to the classically inspired White City of 1893. The city eventually did claim Northerly Island for an airport. Meigs Field opened in 1947. Flash forward to 2003, Meigs' lease had run out, and Mayor Richard M. Daley, never a fan of the airport, scrambled the bulldozers in a midnight raid. In the years since, the land has been slowly converted into a park. The old modernist terminal building is now a nature center, and the northern end of Northerly Island is a concert venue. The Burnham Plan called for athletic grounds where Soldier Field stands today, and the original classical design certainly would have pleased Burnham. But like many Chicagoans, he might have been baffled by the flying saucer that landed on top of it in 2003. The Field Museum was located here as a compromise. The Burnham Plan envisioned it where Buckingham Fountain is today, but the Illinois Supreme Court blocked that plan citing a historic promise that the lakefront remain forever open, clear, and free of buildings. The field was marooned between lanes of Lakeshore Drive until 1996. That's when the northbound lanes were relocated to the west, forming a museum campus with two other lakefront gems. The Shedd Aquarium, home to more than fish, including marine mammals, penguins, and insects, and the Adler Planetarium, the first of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs>